Hi, everyone. This is me and Brian again. We're here to continue our journey uh, to build a, a, a Blazor uh, virtuali virtualization component that will basically allow people to integrate with any data source, no matter what this, this data source is, and basically guarantee you know this continuous integration and call between the, your, your UI component and whatever data source you have to kind of give infinite scrolling or virtualization, like, you know, the cool kids call it, you know, um, uh, into Blazor. We want to give you something that's so easy to use, something I can plug and play into your architecture, wherever that architecture is. And uh, as usual, I'm joined by my dear friend, Brian, today to continue that journey. Hi, Brian. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you? <laughs> Great, great. I'm doing great. All right. So what are we going to do today? You know, I'm going to, you know, uh, I remember last time you and I wrote a failing test, you know, and we basically went and said, you know, let's make that test pass. And we validated that, you know, the, you know, we built a little broker and we're passing in take skip and all that kind of good stuff that happened. And I'm going to share my screen here for a second, Brian, just to, you know, kind of, you know, walk people through what we've done, what you and I have done uh, in the last time. So, so here's the deal now. Now that we built this load first page, we also want to protect people from doing bad things, right? Like, for instance, someone could go in there and say, I want to pass in page size zero. That should not be okay. Like, start at is okay, but page size cannot be okay. That would be a validation error. What do you think about that? Should we... Should we write some I, rules? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I agree. We should write some rules, but I'm going to just uh, throw a little spanner in the works. So if you want to ask in query quote uh, a data and you just want to get the quantity, you actually the tricks way of doing it is passing page size zero. So, oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Yeah. So you want to, yeah. okay, so you, yeah. you can see us and go ahead, go ahead, Brian, go ahead. Brian. Yeah, so, so in that scenario, I can see a request going through. I don't know if we can, if it's necessarily at this interface point, but I can see a request going through that we might want to support uh, request our page size of zero, but not negative zero and not negative, a negative number, of course. Yes, we do need validation. Okay, so here's but a I, question I just for you. Point, mm -hmm. pointing out okay. that scenario, page size zero is a way of getting back the total items count, so... I agree 100%. Yeah. What do you think yeah. about this leveraging unsigned integers to prevent people like uh, get that mm. out of the box kind of thing? So instead of saying int, we could say you int. And this yep. way, I don't have to worry about, okay, let's let's start with this. I'm going to start this. I'm going to call it code drop. Code drop basically meaning that I'm just doing a quick cleanup to make sure yep. that, that, that the values are coming in. So let's, let's do this. Let me go and fix our interface here real quick. So it's you int. You int will give us this amazing out of the box by default by design and i'm assuming that we're gonna have to fix our uh, our brokers as well i wonder if the skip and take will be friendly for us ah look at this so that that we guaranteed that the type that's coming in is going to be like that we can go in here and do this i'm okay with that if you are that's basically me saying i know for sure that the contract that i'm exposing enforces an unsigned oh. integer yeah, positive, yep. right? Yep. So if that's the case, then we can do this. And just like I said, brokers are just wrappers around that. So, you know, I'm okay with doing this particular piece in here and we can do this as well. There's there's another way to do this for just for the people watching us. You know, the other way is to actually write validation rules that says, you know, the value cannot be negative, but why bother if you can actually leverage a data type outside of the box that basically tells you, you know, hey, you know, you don't have to pass it. You don't have to worry about that. Let me give you real time as you're developing an error that says nope sorry this has to be an inside integer so this is this is this guy this is this the interface this is the method i think now our tests are going to freak out a little bit let's see so our tests there it is so now i want to go here and say instead of get random get random number i'm just going to go and say get random positive number and i'm going to return an inside integer in here because it's just an implementation detail that's outside of the scope okay of what we're really trying to implement here. So I'm just going to go here and say, since I know that this is always going to be uh, a positive rum number, I'm just going to fix my test here to say, give me an unsigned unsigned integer like this. I wonder if this guy has options in here. No, it doesn't. Okay, that's fine too. Okay, what about get value? Does get value give us, since this is me just trying to learn something new as I'm going, because, okay, I know that I can cast it. Great. But can I do a little bit more than that? That's basically what I'm going for. Okay. 
Uh, I don't know if you know this. Do you know about this piece here where you can just, you know, alt and grab the thing and then you do you int and now you named all of them? You, you... No. That's okay. new to me. Okay. Black magic. <laughs> see, see? <laughs> That's the best thing about pair programming. You show me these weird things you know, I show you the weird things I know, and we all get to be weird together. <laughs> <laughs> So, so let me just change. Uh, <clears throat> let me change this to always say get random positive number. So this way, basically, I'm really specific about you know the data that's coming in. How I'm getting the positive number, it doesn't matter. This is how I'm getting the positive number. Now, let me just go ahead and run all these tests. That's the beauty, beautiful thing about having unit tests is that we get to run these tests and we get to sh to make sure that we haven't broken uh, anything at all. So here is my test explorer. I'm gonna run. The test here we only have the one test so i'm um, hopefully this will work out here we go here we go so this is the first thing i'm gonna do here i'm just gonna go here and say you know this is a like a refactor i call the code drops like rubbing glasses you know i'm basically going and saying code rub rub uh, uh change uh change contract to unsigned and signed integers okay so this way we basically got this outside of the box we don't have to worry about that i probably need to create a new branch as well if you give me a second here brian let's go and do users Hassan habib and then we're going to go and say uh, code rub uh, change to positive inputs okay so I have this here. Now I'm just going to go here and just commit this and push it straight. And we're going to merge this right away because this is its own thing. It has nothing to do with what we're going to be doing next. Okay. So I'm going to go real quick here to, let's see here, Brian. I'm going to go into, uh, see, with this with this new uh, Windows 11, my eye keep going to the left side looking for the icons, but they're all right there under you know, at the at the center. So I guess that's okay. So okay, let's share the screen for this here. And let's get this one merged in. Let's get the PR merged in and created right away for this one. So here we go. B virtualization. B virtualization. There it is. And then I can create this pull request. And then this is, has all the details on it. This is all good and dandy. And then just taking a quick look. I, I, you know, I used to just go and say, you know, I just built that code. You know, why do I have to look? But I promise you, every time I look at this, I always find something. Usually, you know, you probably missed something or whatever the case may be. Anyway, it looks like it, this is not the case in here. So I'm just going to merge this in. All right. So the second thing that I wanted to ask you about, you know, let's go back to our uh, master branch here. And the second thing I want to ask you about <coughs> is, me. yeah, no worries. Um, so I'm going to go back here. Now, we need, I'm going to go back to master, or main, um, and then let's go in here and let's just talk about the other part, which is we want to be able, there is no known exception that we know of at this point in time in terms of validations, you know, other than because we now we prevented invalid values. And if people send in zero and zero, that basically, like you said, that might just means they just want the count. And that's okay, mm -hmm. I guess. I, I, I agree with you. This is a valid case. No problem there. Now, the mm -hmm. other thing is we want to be able to handle any other exceptions, which is like the catch-all exception of things, anything that could happen from the native library that we're using in our broker, right, that could potentially prevent us from being able to um, uh, continue with our operation here, whatever that means. Okay, so let me let me get the master branch here real quick, our main branch. It's going to take me a while to get used to the, you know, switch in terminology there, uh, Brian, but let's see. So this is, let me see if I can open this up from... So on the weekend, I pushed a branch up, which just had a um, edit the config for the whole project solution, which uh, enforced the, um, the uh -huh. copyright header across the whole solution. I see. Okay, I'm opening this one here. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I, I guess I get to see my stuff here. Yeah. And then I open this as virtualization and I see the unsigned. Okay, we're back in business. Okay, perfect. So here's the deal. Handling exceptions, you know, uh, you know, is, is a very interesting uh, topic. I'm going to write a test 
I'm gonna take a I'm gonna I'm gonna write a test in here. So instead of dot logic, I'm just gonna say dot exception. So it's the exact same file. I'm using partial classes. Mm -hmm. But instead of logic, I'm just saying exceptions. And we're probably going to expand on that in terms of which function that we're handling the logic or the exceptions for. But we're not there yet. So in here, I'm just going to go and erase all of this junk here. And I'm just going to go and say uh, fact. <laughs> Let's see. Public void should throw service exception on um, uh, take skip. If a service error occurs, and that's it. We're not doing any logging yet at this point in time because we're letting because we're creating a component. We're not creating a full end-to-end -end service. And I'm gonna fake an exception here. So I'm gonna say service exception equal new exception. So that's just any exception that could happen in this service. This way we know for sure that we covered all our bases and we're actually taking that exception and mapping it into something that is readable by, by the people that are using our service. I know this exception probably uses something like a message. I need to create a random message in here. So I'm going to go here and say random, random message string, random message. So the beautiful thing is that we have this nice library for the dynamic. So it's going to be able to give us kind of nice functionality. I'm gonna go up in here. And are, oh, did I already make? Stream. Yeah, oh, did, sure. do, pneumat, pneumatic stream. Yeah, oh, this one. one. Oh, we're gonna yeah. have to go and and remap this yeah. one because this one is meant to return an object, and we're gonna change yeah. from string to multiple different types. Yep. This yep. one is not really guaranteed, but this one for sure. So this is get random. I'm even gonna give her the context. Give give the message the context. Give her. <laughs> give the message the context. Uh, so. Um, so, so it, it makes sense, not just random string. I'm actually getting a message. Control mm -hmm. minus going back here, and I'm going to go ahead and say get random message, and then I'm going to pass this message in here. So this is the message. <laughs> and now the thing about this is that I want to go and say uh, var expected uh, uh, virtualization service exception. And this is the wrapper around this native exception that is being thrown because mostly these services are basically mapping the foreign or external native or external uh, exceptions into local exceptions. So now I need to create this virtualization service exception that will take this exception as an inner exception. So this service exception here is going to be an inner exception. And now I need to create this guy. So what, what can we do here? We can go into our models. I hope we have models in here. We didn't create models for the service because we didn't need to yet. So let me go here and create models. Here we go, models. And then under models, I'm gonna say virtualizations, virtualizations, and then under would virtual, it, uh, go ahead. Go would ahead. it just pass in just the exception or would it pass in a message and the exception? Just a question. Uh, this message here? Yeah, so, um, you're passing you, so two lines down, you got a new virtualization exception, and you're just passing in the exception. I'm just wondering, should it be passing a message, or will the message be part of the constructor? Well, you still want to give people the actual uh, root of the problem in case the person mm -hmm. debugging this wants to actually follow the stack trace all the way down to where this happened. Mm -hmm. But we still want to give them kind of a friendly message that says, "Hey, this is not your fault. This is something that happened mm -hmm. on our side. <clears throat> Go ahead and and contact support, whatever." whatever we're going to mm -hmm. implement this as. You know what I mean? So uh, the message is still going to be there, but we're going to have another friendlier message that is for the service exception. Because technically, if it's a, if it's not a validation message and it's something external, there's nothing they can do about it anyway. You know, But we're going to give them the entire stack trace. What do you, mm -hmm. what do you think? Yeah, the, 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 yeah, I have no issue with that. I just thought that uh, that method, uh, the constructor there, may, should have maybe have had another... Um, string uh, uh to pass in a message that's all but, yes sir but, uh, got it but okay. maybe i'm not saying may not i'm not seeing the end product that you're coming you're you're visualizing so no you're fine you're, fine. you're, you're with me we'll 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 get there <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this i hope you are so okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome so let's go here and let's do this i'm gonna put a the virtualization service except exception in here and I'm basically going and saying, OK, man, I really hate that internal class. I don't know who came up with this format, but uh, here we are. So OK, I'm getting from exception. That, you know, if we were to do validation, I would have been inheriting from something called exception with the X. But uh, we're not 
we're not really in need of that yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and say <laughs> enter exception. And in the base message, I'm basically going and saying virtualization uh, service error. Uh, this is exactly what I meant. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, contact support. And in here, I'm basically passing in. So this is one. And I'm here, I'm passing in the inner exception to it. So this is this guy like this. Inner exception. And in here, I just want to use, I usually say, you know, if if the uh, content that is being passed in is not clear. And I think we even have, have space here. I don't actually... I'm not over 120 yet, so this gets me up to 103. I should be fine, you know, and here we go. So this is my virt virtualization service error accord contact support. So that basically means, hey, something really terrible happened on our side that we can't handle it and uh, reach out to us and we'll be able. And then down the road, I'm going to show you how anytime the service or the exception says contact support, it maps it to an actual contact like emails and stuff. It gets really fun. Now we need to fake an exception. We need to make this exception happen somehow. My gut feel is that I'm going to go for you know, the data source mock, and I'm going to set it up, and I'm going to go say anytime, anytime that you're being called, so broker dot uh, take skip, it is any, right, integer in here, <coughs> like this, um, mm -hmm. and it is any integer, so it doesn't, I really don't care what is what is being passed in, then throw an exception. So this is throws. I think I need, usually you, I always need an extra, an extra thing, an extra closing parents in here. So, okay, this is not an int actually, it's a uint. So this is, it is any uint. So now this exception will happen anyway. We're faking it. We're basically faking an injury. We're going and saying, hey, you know, blow up, right? Okay, now I can encapsulate this in an action and I can go and say, uh, take skip, take skip action and I can keep all of this into my service please forgive me Brian if if uh, the code that I write is a little bit you know foreign it's it's a little uh, you know it's 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 it there, there is a I'm, I'm waiting for you to kind of tell me Hassan wait you know why is this like that but it, you know if anything here looks weird please let me know I'm, I'm more than happy to kind of uh, I will definitely question you when yeah. I'm not when I'm yeah. confused yeah, yeah, if, yeah, you yeah. To, okay. if you want me to question you over other things to make it clearer for the viewers I will yeah absolutely <laughs> yes yes that's that's the point that's why I'm doing this because you're gonna yeah yeah there you go okay so here's that stuff and also I need some numbers right so I'm gonna go here and say some uh page uh, some start at which is get random number in here and also some uh, page size. And when I say some normally, like from a standardization standpoint, when I say some, it basically means I don't care. I really don't care about this value. It's some value, right? It doesn't really change anything in my system. You know, uh, I'm, I'm already going to fake an exception anyway. So I'm just going and saying, hey, this is a this is this is some value that I have to put there just to get the, the system running. Okay, some start at some. I already take exception, and let's go and and validate it. So assert throws, and this should throw a virtualization service exception, and take skip action. And the last thing I want to do here is that I want to go and say, well, verify that this data mock with whatever value that we passed in has only been called once and only once. So this is, I love that it's doing my job in here. This is great. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was hoping that it wouldn't know how, but uh, man, you know, I it's 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 great to, to 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 witness this. It's it's amazing. All right, so this is this is a failing test. This is me going and saying. If whatever exception originates from take, skip, catch it, and wrap it up in a virtualization service, that's the mapping into local models, and then verify that this has been called, and then go ahead and say, make sure that this dependency has never been called beyond that point. Control KE will clean up my usings. And then the last thing I need to do here is to basically run, run this, and let's see how this works out. So a question, I might be ahead of myself. Um, mm. logging, logging the exceptions and stuff like that, that's like another step. We get to another, um, we do another um, test and the test will then test to see yes. if we're doing uh, logging. Yeah, yeah. So that will be the next step to, to this very test. We're going to create something called a logging broker. 
Mm -hmm. And this logging broker is what's going to help us. We're going to call that logging broker as a dependency and we're going to verify that we actually did. Like I usually in any of my tests, you'll see me seeing something like this occurs and log it async. Any open source project that I have, I basically say that and log it, meaning that I also verify that this logging. Yeah, we're going to get to that point for sure. Um, OK, so here is a failing test, right? We're going to go. We're going to do the red, green, blue here. <coughs> gonna, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'll let you do your best with it, and then I'll tell you, because there's a very, very weird way that I handle exceptions. I can't wait to see what you think about it. But here is a <laughs> here is a, uh, here's a branch. So it says users. This time I'm going to say Brian. What's your use, What's your GitHub username again? It's, is it Brian. Parker? Brian, uh, Brian L. Parker. Yeah. L. Parker. OK. This time, OK. And this time I'm saying foundations dot uh, dash um, uh, load first page exceptions. There you go. And let me give you a failing test for a commit. So here's my failing test, thin arrow, fail. And over to you, my dear friend. All right. Your turn. I'm switching over. Now, now we can see your screen. <laughs> awesome. Right. There you go. So I just had to close all these uh, close all tabs just for now and okay. start from yep. So uh, I guess I got to pull the branch. Yeah, you got you got a fetch. Yep, 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 yep. yep. So uh, just walk me through that. That's uh... so 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 go to uh, not the remote. Do you see this uh, zero slash zero at the bottom? The up and yep. down arrows. Click on that and type fetch. Yeah, hit fetch. <clears throat> uh, oh, uh, switch over to the main branch first. Is that, that that will get you? Actually, I, I don't think it matters. But anyway, okay, you did the fetch. Let's click on main again, that main uh, yeah. thing. And then if you go to remotes, click on that guy. Uh, which one? The main, yeah. the main. And yeah. then click on remotes. And then you should see the branch that I just created, which is Brian L. Parker. That's, that's the one. Yeah. All right. That should load things for you. Let's see. Oh, or otherwise, you're just going to have to navigate and open the folder again. <laughs> yes. That, that's what it that's what it just did with me just a second ago okay fine so go to file and then just open the project yeah I guess that's that Brian okay well, whatever on. it is uh, okay hang on sorry so I, I'll just do it the quick and easy way I'll just yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine too uh -huh. <laughs> yeah so I switched out to Windows 11 myself on yep weekend. yep Yep, I you know I did I did this a lot before. Threw, I, yeah. threw, my, threw myself in the deep end. Yeah, just, just, just <laughs> hey guys, here's my entire folder, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, load first page. All right, so you should have a failing test. Let's run these tests and see what's the deal. Looks like you're in the right place. Yep. Just give it a few more seconds, probably. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, if you go to view, it'll show you the test explorer. Yep. And then test explorer. Yep. Yeah, I've got it over here in another window. Okay. All right. It's probably going to be too small. Can I scale that? No. Terrible. And, unfortunately sorry. not. This is why I go for like, uh, but today, today we're just being... Uh, you know, we, you and I, I didn't even scale mine as well. We're just happy with our Windows 11 situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. You have an exception. Let's see. Awesome. All right. So, um, huh. so I need to go to that exception. No? I need yes, to go sir. To the service. Yes, sir. The service, the implementation. Yep. I guess we won't be able to fat arrow this anymore. It was nice mm. while we had it, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So, uh, hmm. so, How are we going to test that? Because we can't get in. Sorry. I'm so, yeah, that's, no, that's fine. So I'm basically <laughs> saying, yeah, I'm saying that this take skip, this take skip is going to fake throwing an exception, right? Yeah. So but, we probably want to uh, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Yeah. My only thought is we can't. We're not inside the code when this exception is thrown because we're actually preventing it from getting into the code with an unsigned int. Oh, you mean you mean passing in the variables? Yeah. Well, have, sorry, I'm going to. Sorry, I'm just maybe I'm confused, but I mean you're expecting me to throw an exception based on a non-positive integer coming in here, but we can only take an unpositive integer in here because we're using an unsigned int. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Except, the exception that we're throwing is faked up by the dependency. So the dependency yeah. is the one that's throwing the exception. But yeah, the values that are being passed in is is not the cause of that exception in any way, shape, or form. In fact, if you look at the... Let, let's jump back to the tests. Look at the test. Mm -hmm. The test saying whatever you're passing in, whether it's good or bad, go ahead and blow up. Throw an exception. See that line, if you scroll up one... Uh, line uh, oh you don't have well, you don't have line numbers enabled you probably okay anyway the one that says this the data source broker mock that set up that guy so that guy yep. basically I'm saying whatever that is whatever that is that is being passed into to uh, my dependency it should throw a, a service exception right mm -hmm. which basically means it wants you to wrap up that call that you have to that dependency on the service side with a try catch block and map or merge that exception into what we call virtualization service exception. Let's try it. So give this a try catch first. Let's try this one. So yeah. I'm confused. Uh, so you, you want me to put try, a try catch around this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're catching this exception. Perfect. Yep. Now what this what the test is saying, try control KD. See what it does for you. Nice. Okay, so now check this out. Now that I caught an exception that I know may or may not occur out of this dependency, definitely in this case of this test it will occur. We want to map localize that exception because that exception is native or external, right? It should it doesn't belong to your upstream business logic services or components. So let's mm -hmm. pass this exception. Let's create a new exception, but it's called virtualization service exception that will take that native exception as an input parameter. Let's give it a shot. Go ahead. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I personally just go like, whoops, I said I'd probably just do that and uh -huh. delete that and nice. equals, uh, drop that down. Yep. And then we pass in, whoops. And yep, we give, pass in. Give it that here. exception. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yep, that's right. We just need the, yeah. we need the references. Control period should do the trick for you. <clears throat> normally, I normally cut and paste them and drop them in, but it's not. Oh, it doesn't find it. Why? Uh -oh. Vir virtualization service exception. Does it show up in the models? Yeah, I was just looking for that. That's Maybe odd. It's not a misspelling. Uh, yeah, it's, it is a misspelling. <laughs> even even then, Visual Studio sometimes finds it for you. I'm actually surprised. Mm. Oh, oh man, how many times I misspelled things. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so, okay, so now the only thing that's left for us is just to throw that guy back out. So we're throwing yeah. that virtualization service. I'm assuming that if this is the case, then this should make the test pass. Something like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Yay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, so what do you think? Any questions about this piece here? No. I, I, um, I literally just localized the event. Yeah. That's all. Mm -hmm. You basically wrapped just in my, yeah, my way of wording it was you wrapped the, yes. the, um, the external ex exception into one of our own, so we, uh, we, we've we turned it into a, a like business language of our own. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, now pass this back to me with the with the with a commit for the test name and the result. I will do the blue part, the 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 refactoring yep. part. I have a very very interesting way. You know, I came up with this about two years ago, and people love it. I basically abstract away the exception handling, so it doesn't create a noise. For the people that are trying to handle the exception, that are trying to read the the business logic, 
because normally you don't you don't really care about how the exceptions are handled when you're going and trying to understand what the code is doing so i literally took this object-oriented programming to the extreme by saying okay objects meaning 3d objects then we need to create aspects of it so I'm, i'll take this back from you brian and let's see I'm gonna increase. I'm gonna have to increase the the screen size here. I hope that my PC doesn't restart on me. That would be embarrassing. But uh, <laughs> but but let's see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna increase this the screen size to see. So this is wow. They changed everything in here. That's crazy. That's some crazy business. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to this. I don't see any restart requests yet. So that's I think that's okay. I think. All right. Here we go. So back to my side. I'm gonna pull in your commit here we go and then i'm gonna run the test again just one more time and then i'm gonna do the refactoring red green blue that should do the trick for us Let's see here. yep you made it pass thank you sir now let's go here and, and and refactor this now check check this new way that i'm doing exception handling so you see normally there is many many of these exceptions like normally in a in a large enterprise application you'll see them like this many 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 of those which creates a some sort of noise when people are trying to read what your code is really trying to do you know it creates a little bit of noise so what did i do here i basically went and said okay let me make this class partial let me make this truly as an object so i'm going to make this class partial in here and then i went and i created a new file in here and i call this file virtualization uh, service dot oh it's not showing the screen it's so bad uh, exceptions .cs. so i'm going to create this i created this file in here look look how it's nesting right under the main mm -hmm. file so there's the nesting here that's going on and then i'm going to go up in here and say this guy should kind of error out because i'm basically you know i have uh, two classes with the same name I'm actually surprised Visual Studio didn't catch it up yet. But I'm going to go here and say partial, right? And here's what I'm going to do from there. I'm going to go and say private read, uh, private delegate. Uh, delegate. And then this guy's returning an I queryable. And then I'm going to say returning queryable function. So this is just a delegate that I'm creating, right, for the function that I'm trying to make. And then in addition to this I queryable, I'm, I'm going to go up in here and say private uh static i queryable doesn't have to be static here we go queryable excuse me Turn you're, fine. Yeah, yeah, you're fine <laughs> you're, you're fine you're fine <laughs> so okay so private i queryable and then i'm gonna go and say try catch so the function itself is called try catch and this function takes in that delegate as an input parameter so this is a function here that takes a function and then inside that guy I'm gonna put the stuff exactly the stuff that you were doing I'm gonna go here and say exception <laughs> and then I'm gonna go here and say uh, you know create var uh, virtualization service exception equal new virtualization virtualization virtual <laughs> virtualization service exception let me pull the reference here. And then this guy takes in this exception as an input parameter like this in here. And then it throws the virtualization service this way. I can go back here and say return, returning function, whatever that function that I'm going to be passing in. And now check this out. Now I don't have to use any, any of that really. All I have to do is just do this. Check this out. Take all of this out, all of this out like this and now pass it through yeah. yeah exactly so now i can just go look look it, it doesn't even look like anything is going on like the people that are uh that will be using the function they wouldn't even know much much difference because i'm just putting it just on the outskirts kind of the border of what's actually being done and i think i forgot something here it needs to be the returning i queryable t that's what it is okay and that is i queryable t and what else i'm missing here the function itself i think Let's see if i do this right here you go t like this uh no the try catch itself that's right one sec there's this t here Let's see if that does the trick for us yeah there you go so i have all of this 
Now if I go back here, this guy technically should be happy. I don't think I also, I don't really think I need this in here either. You know, I'm just passing in a, or, or would it, would it need that? Let's see. So this is this guy and I'm just returning this guy. Oh, I guess it does just in here. Okay, fine. I haven't actually done it with, uh, I usually do it with very specific object types, but I guess this time we're going to have to do it this way. And then this try catch will take the T type in here as a parameter. I'm assuming. Let's see here. Um, so this is load first page. Does this mean that this guy needs to take in that type in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is really interesting. Let's see. Uh, I actually, I actually have never uh, done it with a T type, but it shouldn't be too complicated to do it. So I'm passing in this try catch, and this is taking I queryable for a generic type, and we are basically, I already said in here that this is going to take that type. Uh, why wouldn't, why wouldn't this guy be happy with, let's see here, maybe we can make this work. I'm, I'm also really concerned that, the, that this guy didn't complain about the type because this shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue here, but let's just see. Um, so this takes the T type, is it like this? Oh, that's why, because it doesn't, because I guess on the partial side, it doesn't really, it doesn't honor that. There you go. So here you go. So check this out. Now I have this try catch in here and people get to focus on whatever their business logic is in this function without having to worry about what's actually happening behind the scenes in terms of exception handling. From a readability standpoint, this is a huge boost from a readability standpoint because, of course, you know, people, I don't want people like in, in some of the projects, like if you go and look at OSSS or any of my open source projects, this can get really, really large. And you want to handle these exceptions if you follow a particular standard, but this is basically the rewrite. Now, can I, since this is only one line, can I just go and do this? You sh you're down right, I can. There you go. There's a little bit more optimization. Now, I'm just going to run a cleanup real quick and and I also want to make sure that my tests are passing because that's how we know for the people watching us this is how Brian and I know you know that we didn't break anything so here's the tests here's everything running in and so this is this guy boom everything is good and dandy what do you think about that it's simple it took away all the exceptions if you want to see the exceptions, you can go on the side here in this partial class and see what's going on. Otherwise, you get to just look at the business logic and stay focused on the business logic, logic rather than anything. I like else. it. It's very clever. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay. So so there's that part. I'm going to go up in here and just say refactor. So I'm just going to go code <coughs> up and then abstract, abstract away, away exception handling. Okay. Says so that guy. Now, this basically, now this particular function in my dictionary, this function is ready for production. It's ready to be consumed outside of the service. But I have two questions for you. I think, I think in our service here, we might need to expose two properties. We need to expose the current start, start add value and the current page size value in addition to another function that says uh, get next or retrieve next. What do you think about that? Um, I don't think we have to pass in the current page value. I think the, um, the, the current page size, I think the virtualization component that we uh, hook up to calculates mm -hmm. the current page size itself. So I'm getting on, let me think. So I guess it is. So uh, yes, I guess we do. Um, yeah. Okay, then let's yeah, let's yeah. have. Yeah, Sorry, I'm just thinking it through. <laughs> no, you're right. You're absolutely right. So let's have this be our next thing. Our next thing for this would be we're going to need to kind of create two properties. One of them will be a page uh, size, right? This guy. And then the second one would be something to the effect of start at. And I'm and I'm and I'm suggesting probably with start at. What do you think about calling start at position current position? Or current start position. Yeah, I, I, we come across this before. I thought offset was a better term because it's an offset from the start. Um, That's I don't right. know. Yeah, 
Um, We're gonna have to think about that. I mean, this is—I yeah. I guess this is the homework for you and I today. You know, tonight I'm yeah. just gonna have to think. You know, should it be start at or not? But I think at this point in time, I think I think we're done here. I think we created the. Uh, we took one yeah. extra step. If I go real quick here, Brian, into the um, into GitHub real quick while I'm at it, just allow. The me only other to... property that I'm concerned about in the service is we need to somehow pass in some sort of default query. Uh, as in, um, like we're, we're hitting an endpoint, and the endpoint's going to give us a default data set, and it's going to be sorted however it throws it out. Now, my I, the initial um, POC I showed you actually passed in a query, and we're actually bringing back all the weather sort of by date. So, uh huh. Um, uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's somehow uh -huh. we need to pass in some sort of um, default query. Gotcha. Or default, default expression. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. I think we should start going there. Uh, okay. So let's see here, just uh, looking at our commits, you know, so fail, pass, exception handling, looking at the files here real quick, just to make sure things are looking right. A little bit of cleanup in here, input start at, this is for the files that we forget anything. I don't think we forgot anything. I think this configuration that you added in for, um, for adding in the copyrights right away. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty genius. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. That makes things a little bit easier. I guess I guess we're good. If you're good, I'm good. We can yeah. merge this in. All right, there we go. Another step into the B virtualization project. The beautiful thing about this, everything is documented here. So <laughs> we yes. get to, uh, and I'm gonna I, I add think, these YouTube videos in here as well. Go ahead, go ahead, Brian. I, I think in hindsight, the engineers, the senior engineers that are looking on will see, think this is valid, really pretty a simple project, but it is, and it is really a simple thing to do. Yep. But uh, the, real, the reality is it hasn't been done and it needs to be done. And I think yes. it's gonna be a very, very, very useful tool. <laughs> and, and more importantly, I'm just, I'm just trying to capitalize on like, okay, you, you're building this amazing project, which is really cool. I appreciate that. But I also want to show people like all these concepts and patterns and all the things that we're doing. What's it take to build a library? Like you see a lot of libraries on GitHub, right? You see the code, you see the commits and everything. But how many of these libraries have documented pairing sessions that shows you exactly the people that worked on it, how they worked on it, the history of creating the piece is, is, is also something I guess more entertaining. As usual, Brian, this is really fun, you know, to hang out with you, sir, to write some code and just write some failing tests. I know things are going to get complicated really fast. You know, we're just starting really slowly, but surely, but things are going to get super uh, complicated and we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to use the .NET benchmark library to kind of see you know, performance-wise, what does that mean? You know, for us. This is this is the this is the stuff I'm really keen to see is how it's going to get benchmarked and tested. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anything else from your side before we wrap this up? No. Thank you again for your time. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in another video.